Good evening, good evening folks, good evening one, good evening all, wherever you happen to be in the world today, I hope you're all keeping well. This evening, how can I say this, my guest, not so special, not so special, no, 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 <laughs> far from special, very far from special, this is a man who basically kicked me into gear when I stepped into the arch many moons ago started playing bass and whatnot, made a load of mistakes. And people and he said, you know what, come back next week. So went back next week for two years. Two years solid. Every Friday, Saturday, in some cases even a Sunday. Making music, yeah. enjoying it. Until we're now at this point. His name is Mr. Robert Clark. How you doing Robert? Welcome. Thank you, Ron. Thank you for having me on the show. Always a pleasure, sir. Always a pleasure. It has been a long time we haven't caught up with each other as yet. But yes, we've got things, what's the words? Things are in the pipeline. Yeah, things are bubbling. All right. The tap is about to be turned on. So that we <laughs> yes. can outpour to you out there what we've been up to. Yeah, definitely. Now, it's been a while in the making, as they say. Yes, When you're making definitely. lemonade, you need some lemons. <laughs> you go through the bitter experiences, you go through the sweet ones. But we yeah. end up at this point where we are today. Yeah, definitely. Which I'm grateful for, because if it wasn't for a man like this guy, and of course my two uncles, Uncle Bill and Uncle Mark, yep. things would be very different right now. But yeah. <laughs> it's nice when you have people around you with the same mind who can point you straight ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Robert, after a big yes. intro like that, what have you been up to, sir? What have I been up to? Wow. Um, it's almost a year now. Hmm? Almost a year. March, mid-March would be a year since everyone got locked down. Uh, and the arts had to close. And even though I've opened up intermittently throughout that the, the last year, the stop starting did possibly did more harm than good um, insofar as we couldn't really get anything done and finished properly. Mm. So essentially, I took the early months into the summer to totally refurbish the bar, um, uh, put put all the beer, beer, the beer is now on tap, uh, which has made a big difference. Mm -hmm. Even when I think about carbon, you know, these days, your carbon footprint, um, can waste is almost, well, essentially now down to zero, can and bottle waste is now down to zero because of having everything on um, tap. So that's a great improvement. Unfortunately, um, that I planned the year before, um, got the pumps in and then everything shut down. So was not able to use it to its fruition. Mm. And of course, you, you know, like most people, as you said, a long time in coming, uh, the control room finally. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, getting the control room together whereby I can record and have the Arch One record label uh, finally running. I mean, you know, because you 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 run it, mm. the Arch One radio station run, and it was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So I'm looking possibly by the end of this year, and you might think people might think so that's a long time, but given what's gone on. Mm -hmm. um, for a year and given that we have all had the time I don't know how people can say oh we've done there's not enough days in the week well all of us have had groundhog days of late mm -hmm. we, you know it's some for some of us it's boring and for a lot of people it is hard to stay motivated especially when the government wants to look at artists and basically tell them they're not viable yeah, you know it's, it's it's not a good position for artists to be in when your own government is telling you to go out and retrain, even though they backtracked on that 
it was said, it was out there. Mm. You know, so there's a lot for artists to prove. There's a lot for me to prove um, as a venue, as a black man owning a venue. Mm. Um, you know, it's there's, 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 there's a lot that needs to be done. I'm grateful to have Arch One. It's in its been there over 12 years now, 12 years now, 13 years this year. Oh. Um, and in spite of all the things I've gone through, as you said, flood, um, Archie's got closed due to one of the other units having an electrical fire. Mm. So we all had to close down to bring everything up to spec. Uh, yeah, there's been trials and tribulations, but what's different, Ron, for us? Nothing. You just got to go through it and come out the other side. That's it. Have to put you know, I have a passion and drive yeah, forward. And get on with it. Ooh. Yeah. You know, I, I have a passion. You... My passion is is, mm. is music, you know, and I love my passion. I've noticed. Those. You know, the passion to music mm. and everything around it, everything around it, all the arts really, independent film, comedy, you know, um, and all genres of music. I don't discriminate really. People, mm. you know. Yes, I have preferences, but I can't have somewhere like the Arch being as intimate and as small as it is, only catering to one genre of music. Doesn't make sense. That's, that'd be, mm. doesn't make sense. Yeah, that's cutting, that's just cutting my demographic down too much when, you know, I'd rather have as many different people across the demographic come to the arch as possible. You know, that's that's what I'm looking for, you know, to be totally inclusive, essentially, just inclusive. You know, it's about spreading the love as far as I'm concerned. Mm. And, you know, that's what, given what we've gone through in almost a year, I think, man, do we need that right now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That <laughs> is true. Now, I've known you for a number of years now. Yeah, and I've seen things change from well, basically gone from naught to a hundred, literally, and fluctuate in between. Right, okay, which is and cool. fluctuate, yeah, it's good because that means yeah. it's alive. If it fluctu if it stays at yeah. one thing, it's like mm, nothing happening there. But when you see fluctuation, oh, it means someone's thinking yeah. of changing something. The change happens and it grows again. This yeah. is what I've learned from you, just from being at the art. Yeah. Now, I remember I did actually one of my first gigs at the Arch. Yes. When I finally... Yeah, with Linda and the other guys, the, the, the band. Yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> and that was a nice evening. That was a nice evening. But then I've had, what's it, I think two or three birthdays there as well? Yeah, you have. And yeah. each time... One of, them was off, one of them was off the wall. Yeah, it was Yeah, it was a little bit mental. Little, just a little bit. I can't remember what one, but it was a good one. It was a good one. It was a good one. Yeah, it was jammed, yeah. Because we actually yeah. had to do a change of, of people inside to people outside. Inside and outside, yeah. Twice. It was a good thing it was summer. That was, it was yeah. warm. Weather was good, so thankfully, yeah. So, is the, you know, you have to yeah, remember a... all the good times, but it's, it's far yeah. from over. That's the thing. Yeah. It's far from over. Yeah. So once oh, no, no, all of no. this thing levels out and we can get back to some yeah. form of normality, oh, we, we intend to be doing... This, we've got, this is we've just got a list new, of things. Another, yeah, there's, there's a new, it's a new beginning. Hmm. It's, a, it's a new beginning. I mean, Arch One is... I've been self-employed for the best part of 40 years. Hmm. Um, I have no other way of making a living. I haven't done Arch One for 40 years. I've done many things uh, in a 40 year period. Um, but Arch One has brought me so much joy. It's what I love doing. Um, I don't earn money like I used to as a design draftsman, I'm, or even when I had my interior design shop. I'm earning a lot less money now than uh, I've ever earned. But man, am I, I I'm much happier. Hmm. my creativity my true creativity is flowing because what a lot of people don't know was uh, when I was a kid teenage years I actually played trumpet when I was in school um, not my, fir my first instrument as a kid was a recorder like, lo like a lot of kids yeah, in yeah. primary school hmm. um, and then I joined boys brigade 
in the 60s. Um, started playing the bugle, moved on from the bugle to the trumpet. Um, I was pretty good. I had a great, great tone. And so much so, my, that I had a teacher that played French horn, came from outside, he was an external teacher. And got me um, an audition for the Youth Philharmonic, which I was lazy when it came to studying, studying music. I was, I, I just like playing. And then, if you can imagine, early 70s in this country, jazz was actually frowned upon. It was not part of the curriculum. Oh. No, it was only you, you could you could do classical. That's everyone. You, you were classically trained, and that was it. Mm. You know, you're classically trained, and that was it. Um, and I suppose when I was 14, 15, I uh, got this audition for the, um, the Youth Philharmonic at um, the Royal College uh, Music, and I didn't think I was going to get in, and I thought. You know, I haven't really studied. I left it till the night before to really start practicing what I had to practice. Wow. Went to the audition, played for them, sat outside. It was such a nerve wracking experience to go beautiful building and you just, but it was very, it was nerve wracking. Mm. It was nerve wracking for a, a young teen. And I sat there, they called me back in and I got in. They accepted me to the, the Youth Philharmonic Orchestra. But I was so lazy. I was so you don't you don't realize it at the time. And then coming from a West Indian background, you know, your parents, they don't mean any harm. They want you to do well in life, but their attitudes then were, well, you can't make money out of music. Ah, oh, yeah. Mm. You can't make money out. You can't make money out of music. Obviously they were around, you know, and as, as much as as much as they kept driving that home, but they enjoyed when I played. And I had a brother-in-law that loved hearing me play the trumpet. So he had a lot of good jazz music. But I played a lot of soul, not even funk. I played a lot of soul, sort of Solomon, Solomon Burke okay. type stuff. But yeah, um, which I loved. So my mum my and dad used to play a lot of his albums. So um, I used to jam along to, to that. but. Unfortunately, I was so lazy, didn't really do any exams. Did okay in my music theory exams. But by the time I'd left school, didn't give up, I was still playing, but then I got a job as an apprentice draftsman and the first lot of money I got, I went out and bought a trumpet. Ah, which makes my parents know him because to spend... <laughs> makes my... Money on that, yeah. 70... 75, 75 or 78 pounds on a trumpet back then. That was a whole lot of money. Mm. But I fell in love with this trumpet. I saw from one of the music shops in Shaftesbury Avenue. And I went, went, and I went in and I just bought this trumpet. I bought this trumpet, took it home. And man, my mum and dad hit the roof. You know, they hit the roof. Oh, well, boy, I've earned the money, mm. you know, so I'm spending it. So I did. I still got the trumpet. Wow. Yeah, still got the trumpet. Um, as you could start at the arch, I used to blast it out every now and again, hmm. bring it out of the case in um, the jam nights. That's right. But, um, you know, trumpet is an unforgiving instrument. It's an unforgiving instrument. You know, it's nice having Mr. Davey come down oh. uh, and play hmm. when he was there. Jay Phelps on the, on the, on the um, jazz jam nights. Yeah, um, mm. Kevin Davey came down to the jam nights and we jammed along side by side. Mm. So it's fun. When I'm doing it that way, I, I can enjoy it. But after seven minutes, my lip just gives up. Oh. My lip gives up because I don't, I didn't have the stamina. Don't, I, you know, you, 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 when you don't play an instrument for 30 years, pick it up and think you're just going to get on with it is absolutely mad. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, that's, that was the, that was ego, ego telling me, yeah, you can do it. <laughs> well, you're in the and right place. The body... <laughs> well, the truth of it is, the body said no. Uh -huh. 
And he had a body People set low. From so, time to time. Yeah. <laughs> Now, the body said no. I've got a few more questions for you. Yes. When it comes to music, what is your favourite genre of music? Ah! <laughs> now, I like going. I like doing this because this is a, this is the reaction I get. I normally say, <laughs> "Give me your top five songs that would get you through a normal day," but I won't do that because I know you. Yeah. <laughs> and I know exactly what your days are like. Because yeah. the days normally go into the morning, especially when it's a jam night. Yeah, definitely, they do. Okay. We start about, what, half seven, eight? Or start yeah. at half seven, eight. And we would roll on. I think the latest we left, literally walked out of that place, was when it was daylight the following morning. Yes. <laughs> Quite a few times. And it was Quite a few times. in the yeah. summer. Yeah, in the summer months, that's easy to do. So strolling yeah. down the road was easy. Now, yeah. it's cold, you've got to be crazy. No, nah. nah. nah, couldn't do it, couldn't do it. But those are the good old days, that's what I call them. Those are the good old, yeah, they are. The, they, they were some great jams. And staying up till, you know, when people are rolling, when the jams, when the jams were good, they were great. Yeah. They weren't just good, they were great jams. Mm. You know, musicians from all walks. You know, as I say, I don't discriminate. You know, we want to play blues, funk, soul, reggae, high life. You come and you play. You come and you play, and it's, it's giving everyone different flavors. Life is about different flavors. Mm-hmm. I don't want to. I don't want to have the same spice all the time. That you know, that it, that gets boring. I don't want to be challenged. Mm. I want to be challenged. I, I mean, jazz music for me is my most challenging music. I love. I can. I love singing jazz. Mm. I can play jazz. Um, my girlfriend calls me melancholy man because of all the all the all the songs that I do hmm. are quite melancholy. I, I just love I love doing a lot of that slow ballads. I love ballads, and for me, you ask me one of one of the top contemporary people for me at this present moment in time is Gregory Porter. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Greg Gregory Porter for me is just refreshing because I am uh, not just I'm not a baritone everyone thinks oh you've got a deep I've got a deep voice and when I use it it properly it's really deep it's a bass it's not baritone it's a bass voice because I had a lot of classical people playing at the arch one day and I was singing along with them and it goes god you're not baritone you're a bass Um, because you can go from the low D on the piano, that's your, that's the lowest note I can hear, you know, so, and over two or three octaves go up with the falsetto. So I've got a huge range. Mm. You just, I just need to practice, you know, practicing it for me is what I don't get to do specifically because I own the arch. Yeah. yeah. And it's about making sure the venue has stuff going on at one time. I was running it seven nights a week. Um, yeah, I remember that. But there's not time. Yeah, there's not the time to practice as I would love. You know, people say, oh, Yo, but you've got your own venue. Very true. But as you've said, what keeps me going is it's just the music. I mean, right, you, you know, I can't say five, five songs, five different, five, five uh, jazz, blues, soul, reggae. Mm. And my main genres and pop that for me that's got great lyrical content you know because i love covering songs you know and doing something different with them so you know as as albums one of the best albums albums i love uh, any gregory porter album Mm -hmm. definitely any any gregory porter album that man is just here to share love and that's what he does that's what he talks about and that's what he does you know, his, his, his albums are about a life journey. And they, they, I think they're brilliant. The content, brilliant. For me, as a man that sings uh, baritone stroke bass, I can sing Rick Porter's songs. They fit my vocal. Mm. So that, that's great to sing along to. One of the, the most albums, other albums, that most um, touched and impressed me um, was um, kind of blue. 
we celebrated, I believe, was 50 years last year. Oh, okay. 50 years or 60 years. 60 years. What am I talking about? Well, 60 years last year, I think it was. Um, kind of blue. Miles Davis, kind of blue. Mm. Um, you know, absolutely pinnacle album for its time. Still strong. You know, it's it's just, uh, it's time. The albums like that are timeless for me. Mm. Absolutely timeless. Um, soul album, female, one of the best albums I've ever heard. Um, Shirley Brown, Woman to Woman. Classic, absolute classic. It, it, you know, that, that album, you know, it, it hard to be. You know, I play that now and it's like, yeah, I'm singing along, <laughs> top of my voice. You know, uh, this, it, it's a great album. You know, she did done she hadn't done many albums. She did one album and that, I think that and then twenty odd years later she did another one, yeah. Fire and Ice, which was which was not a touch on the one tour one. You, you it, 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 it hard to repeat that. I don't think there's a dud track on Woman to Woman. Hmm. You know, I love Marvin Gaye. Um if any singer I aspire to be like I would say it would be for me Marvin Gaye, uh, okay. followed closely, followed closely by Curtis Mayfield. Oh, from that era, okay. Yeah, oh God, come on, Ron, look at me, man, come on, Ron, come on. You're not uh, as you know, old, as old you look. school. Trust me, you're not as old as you look. Old no, I know. Maybe, but no, 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 no. <laughs> you know I, that genre. Don't get me wrong. Saying that though. You know, a lot of the young people, I like, I love what they're doing, but I find music from that era gives me, it's like food, Ron. Hmm. It's food for my soul. It really is, you know. Um, and of course, reggae wise, for me, it has to be the, the, fir al the first album that I remember. Yeah, their first album. Uh, the Whalers, before they were Bob Marley and the Whalers, that was what they became later. Mm. Was the original Whalers it was um, Peter Tosh, Bob Marley, and oh God, how can I forget the Black Heart Man, Bunny Whaler. That's the original Whalers. Okay. So, um, and the album, Catch a Fire, because I saw them do that live on the old Grey Whistle set. Uh, something like two o'clock in the morning on BBC Two back in the early seventies. Oh, going back away, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those you know days that's when TV meant something. Hmm. Yeah, when you know, I mean, they were invited here to play because they they couldn't basically believe it was them that were playing the, the music on that album. Hmm. So they flew them here and said, "Well, that, that is you. Then come over here. We want you to come here to the old Davis Hall Test. We want you to play the album." And they played Catch a Fire. And man, these guys played album quality. It sounded like it was being mixed. I mean, this is 19, what, 72? Mm. 1972? And it was unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. You just think to yourself, wow. Wow, you know. Mm. But for then, for me, at the time, when it comes to music, Black people, we are an oral people. We tell our stories nowadays through our music. We don't necessarily write it down, we tell it through the music. So back in the day, but you know, I'm talking coming from the 60s into the 70s, especially with me as a teenager, everything then was about chant down Babylon. Mm. You know, it was about telling the stories through the music. And I don't think, even though there seems to be a resurgence in that now, there, there wasn't, it's, there's been, there's been a, uh, a time of late, over the last 10 years, when there doesn't seem to be that kind of a message. For me, for me personally, there doesn't seem to be that kind of a message in the music. Hmm. You know, um, as you know, when I do the open mics at the Arch, I've had lots of um, 
poets and rappers and hip hop artists come down. And in the beginning, I should say to them, if you're gonna sp spell about, about prostitutes, guns and hoes, hmm. then you need to come off my stage. You know what I mean? yeah. You're not welcome to my stage. Hmm. If you wanna talk about the situations of life that we're all going through, that you're personally going through. And if you write poetry about what you're what, what you're going through mm. and you want to spout that on my stage, you're welcome. Mm. But I can honestly say that with all, all of the rap artists I've seen over the last, let's say three years, mm. it's positive. It really is positive. It, it makes my heart feel good. It's not, it's not genre of music I would go out and buy. Mm. But when I hear what some of these youngsters are doing, and it's their time, mm -hmm. it's their time to empower, to empower people, to empower people in the right way. Empowering people is, is irrespective of race, color, creed, sexuality. Empowering people is got to be what, what, what art is about. Yeah. It needs to empower, yeah. um, empower people. Um, so I'm there to empower people. And if I can empower people and at the same time make a decent living doing so, then you know I'm gonna be quite I'm gonna be happy. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna be most happy when I'm doing my music. <laughs> we, when I, when no, I we have no that hasn't gone unmissed, shall we say. That hasn't gone missed. Now yeah. with all the music stuff that's gone on at the arch, yeah. You want the you've now got the uh the booth. The control yes. room all set up. Control room, yeah. You've got yeah. your cables run. You've got the the stage set up. You've got everything put in place. When yes. are you looking to do some? Uh, what's the word? Live streaming. Okay. Well, oh, it's been as you say. That's just that's just. If you look at it from what you've just said, hmm. essentially that's the audio side. Yeah. Essentially, essentially, that's the audio side, and that's fine. As you know, I bought back in 2016. I bought, I don't mind saying, we're advertising here for the company. I bought a Mevo live stream camera hmm. back in 2016. It's gone through two iterations since I bought the camera, hmm. but I've still got mine. It's 4K and it works wonderfully. But what I've done, also done, is I've bought three additional regular cameras, okay. uh, regular video cameras, um, a small switcher unit, all the cabling. Um, so I've streamed in the past and they were good streams, you know, like, like you are here now, hmm. you're doing stuff right because there you are in landscape mode. Here I am in portrait mode, <laughs> which which I don't like. Which is, um, but I'm talking to you over Zoom. Mm. Uh, it's really it's really strange that people were so many people were streaming stuff in portrait mode rather than letterbox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So. I was ahead of the curve back then, back in 2016. Um, I was putting up some nice, good quality streams, mostly during the um, improv nights, improvisation, improvisation nights, because mm -hmm. that was it, good. It's great to do and get that genre of music out there. Um, and now that, as a result of the lockdown, every Tom, Dick and Harry in their cat is now live streaming, hmm. you know, um, and that makes for a lot of noise over the airways and over the video ways, you know, it, it's so much content that people have been putting out there, hmm. you know, it's trying to find a needle in the haystack. So I decided that, I need to make what I'm doing a lot slicker, hence three cameras, switcher. up. Um, gonna start making up content. You said when, when? Hmm. For me personally, Ron, I can't see 
given, as I said, given the stop starts that have taken place due to COVID over the last year, I can't see myself now really opening, personally opening the arch before September of this year right. um, to start that. I mean, there's a lot of experimentation to be done from now, from this point, maybe the summer. If, if, if it looks like the summer's going to be good and there's a potential, I mean, obviously finance is going to push me. Hmm. Fin finance is going to dictate whether I essentially open this summer, but it won't be to do for doing live streaming. That'd be to make some money selling beers and doing some small amounts of entertainment. Um, but, you know, we talked before and I want to set the arch up as a media center where we shoot video, um, record albums, do podcasts, radio, internet radio station, record label. You know, it, there's so much now that can be done from there. Mm. And that's the direction I really want to be, be pushing the arch to. Uh, yes, okay. the live stuff will still go on, but really and truly, you know, for me, people have said, oh, is it impossible you survive? This is one of the times it's been really useful to have what is essentially a micro business. Mm. To have a micro business has been good because um, it's manageable. Okay. Uh, had it been any bigger, I would have suffered like a lot of businesses have. Mm. I really would have suffered. Yeah, I suffered anyway. Um, but um, I, I can, and then I can come back, I can spring back. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy for anyone. Mm. You know, people, people, the middle classes, from my, from what I can see, have been slaughtered. You know, um, it, it's not been nice what's gone on. It's, you know, it's been unavoidable for most people, but the people just spend in power. Um, they've been wasted, if you like. Mm. You know, uh, I don't know how a lot of people are going to recover. That's to be seen. That's why it's important when you look at not even, you know, I, I see people wanting to, but I don't watch television. I've just seen posts where people wanting to um, stop their Sky subscriptions because they're not getting the quality of films um, that's out there. So there is a need for content. Hmm. There's a huge need for content, um, content of all descriptions, basically. Uh, and that's what I want to be doing. I want to be doing as much content from the arch as possible across all the genres that arch, arch one is involved with. That's right. Now, and hopefully, that will be in place, as I say, with, especially as you said, with the control room coming in to, to play, you know, that would be absolutely brilliant. Nice. Well, I'm looking forward to that because I know we've got a lot of music ready to, what's the word, play straight away. And I think the Arch One Band is going to be one of them, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's you know what it is, right? It's funny you say you say that. That might that that will happen as a result of the jam night. But mm. um, what's happened with me over the last this last well before before this all happened, lockdown gave me the ch the chance to explore the things I've wanted to do. Mm. So I've got lots of electronic toys, oh. music toys, mm. that will in enhance my solo playing. So I've spent not all of the last year, but enough of it, getting to grips with a lot of the instrumentation that I've got now mm. um, to enhance a solo career more than a band career. Because let's put it this way. You came to my gig, oh, it's almost three years ago, in, in um, Kentish Town. Oh, Map Studio. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's three years ago this do? year. It is going to be three years this year. Um, 
you came you came to that gig um and what i've done has grown hmm. since you know i've got uh, i've got loop pedals and different things going on um even guitar pedals that i'm using for the harmonica oh okay to get different sounds from it um so I, I am pushing, I'm exploring and pushing more of what I want to be doing solo. And that, because that's where it's, that's, that's where it's, that, that's where it's at. It's giving me fire in my belly, Ron. That's, that's really mm. fired me up, you know. Um, to be honest, if I could have, I'd put out a uh, message over a year ago that have volunteers come to the arch hmm. to see if it's something that they would like to do. You and I sat down over five years ago with half a dozen other people talking about the radio station and the recording side of it. Um, so that's what, what I'd like to get arch one with the potential to pain people, obviously, hmm. but run on a voluntary basis where I can step or step away from it and continue with my music that's that's ideally what i want to be doing well all in time all in time all in time yeah all in time because all in the right time. people need to yeah. be in the right place in the right place yeah. yes so, yeah yeah right. and it needs to be the right people hmm. it needs to be the right people yeah now for those of people listening who don't know about the arch yes first of all where is it Right. And second of all, how did it come about? Because I've been ah. going there for a while. Well, over five yeah. years now, six. Oh, six, man, it's over. Oh, yeah, come on. It's over five years. It's, yeah, well, no, this is just making it, making it smaller. <laughs> but I remember I was looking for places to go in London. Couldn't find mm. anything. And then if you did find yeah. something, it cost a, a fair bit because you got to get there. If you're yes. driving, you've got to park. Yeah. Then parking wasn't free. So and you live in East London. It's a, bit, it's a bit tricky. Yeah. So where do we find? And then we spoke, came there, literally 20 minutes from my house. Yeah. And I thought, on a good day, I'll walk there. Yeah. And during the summer, that was perfect, because you could do all sorts of things on the way there and on the way back. Yes. Now, those there are a lot of people who don't know about the arts, because remember when we started doing the jams? And I invited yeah. lots of people. And the one thing they said, oh, where is it? I don't know where it is. Oh, it's too far. And yeah. That, and I said, well, how can it be? All right, if, like, fine, it's too far. Then we had a guy come all the way from, was it Chicago that night? New, New York, wasn't it? it? He came, yeah. He, the businessman that came with his guitar. That's it. His little... He contacted me from the States. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a jam on Friday night? So yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And he came down. And we met the guy from Canada. I'm thinking, if he can yeah. go and he's come from how many miles away, I think <laughs> those in London really ain't got an excuse anymore. They ain't got an excuse. But we just worked with what we had. And yeah. then it grew and grew and grew. And now people are beginning to think, well, where can we go in London? Well, just look on your doorstep. Yeah. And it's right there. So yeah. tell us, where, is London. It? where exactly is it? I, I don't get it. Right, where exactly is it? I'll give you the, the postcode is E16 for Bravo Juliet. Um, it's in East London, hmm. in Canning Town, um, which is in the 12 years that I've been up here, has changed immensely. Uh, and it's still going through changes. There's a lot. London has gone through changes. Hmm. Um, I'd have to revisit London to get to know it again because the amount of building that's taken place in 25 years is unbelievable and canning town is no different hmm. so arch one is halfway roughly between canning town and west ham stations and but we do have a station on our doorstep and that is um star lane on the dlr oh yeah 
the Star Lane DLR station, mm -hmm. uh, Cranberry Lane. It's um, Arch 1, the first arch you will come to, walking down Cranberry Lane on the left-hand side is Arch 1. Um, so that it's Cranberry Lane E16. Now, if you do get to Arch 1 and you're a bit lost, just open your ears. That's it. And you'll hear the music coming out. If you can't hear the music coming out, then you're lost. For want of a better word. <laughs> it's, been, it's been great going there all these years because I treat it as a learning ground. Yeah. Because if you learn, if you want to learn something, the best place to go is a place that you're not going to be, what's the word, shoved down. You're not going to be belittled. Yeah. You're not going to, oh, you're not, no, no, no. If you come with the intention of learning, you're going to pick up something you're going to learn. Because I did. Yeah. And that says it all, as far as I'm concerned. Yes. But it's been a great place. It is not been. It is a great place. And when yeah. you have the food there... Ooh, Thank you. That's a, that's a different story. That is a different story. That's the food... Mm, 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 mm. It's got to be done. Yeah, it, it's, it was... The thing is, Arch 1 is kind of in... Where it's situated, it's right. It's in, it's in an arch under Manor Road. Hmm. It's not a railway arch, but it backs onto the railway, and it's a road arch rather than a rail arch, which is great, especially hmm. for noise. But one of the reasons I opened it there was because it's almost a hundred meters away from the nearest residence. Hmm. Oh yeah. Hmm. It's it's opposite a field. Uh, noise, noise had to be a consideration when I chose it, um, and thankfully the landlords who knew me, because I worked with them at the time, mm. um, developing one of developing a town hall at their port, they'd asked me to work with them because they saw that I, I basically I, I was still sort of in the interior design stroke building game, coming out the other side of it, doing my music, but didn't want to really want to do building but i was hassled by their foreman and he said look why don't you come and work with us for a while we mm -hmm. could do with someone of your skills so i went there in Leighton town hall and um worked there for a while because i was actually living there at the time mm -hmm. under the um, guardianship scheme oh. i was teaching martial arts upstairs in one in the, in the hall i was having jams upstairs. It was absolutely crazy. It was great. It was brilliant. And then I found, whilst I was working in the town hall itself, and the bigger part of it, I found a huge room with what I could only call a safe door on it and started using that for the jams. But they converted the upstairs to offices. So every time uh, the door would open, there was seepage of noise. Oh. You know, noise was filtering out. So they said to me, Robert, why don't you go and have a look at the arches that we've got in West Ham? Mm. And I came along and basically found all the arches were essentially empty, but the, the first one was empty at the steps came down the middle and I could visualize what it was going to be like. Mm. And with my girlfriend at the time, we just took it. I took the arts and said, "Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to develop this." And I think within three months, I did the work. Almost cut my thumb off <laughs> while I was building it. Uh, it was crazy, crazy two, three months of hard work. Mm. But because I was doing interior design and building work for so long, I had so much, so many, so much raw materials that were just sitting around doing nothing, oh. especially electrical stuff, you know. So. I used all the electrical stuff and built, put all the electrics in, added to the electrics that were already there, I should say. And then I, as you note at the time, the original arch one before the flood, all the partition walls there were made out of um, pallets. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I used pallet wood, mm -hmm. you know, to um, make up the, re you know, upcycle. Yeah. <laughs> That's the, that's the upcycle, word, upcycle all the timbers. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, that, and that, so that's, the arch, that's, that's how it all the arch. Yeah. 
So the arch, the arch was born. Um, you said, why? Why did I? Why did I start the arch up? Well, back in the mid two thousands, two thousand and six, roughly, I had my own band um, called Delectation, hmm. which means for your de- for your delight and pleasure. And um, we played at what was then Uncle Sam's Bar on a Friday, every Friday. Did that for about two or three years. That was brilliant. Uncle Sam's for me was an exceptional learning ground as far as bands are concerned and playing and playing in a band. You know, I attended a lot of jam nights, jam nights, blues jams, and they're fine, um, but it's one genre of music constantly, one genre. Mm. Um, I can't remember. Then a bass player, I can't remember his surname, Dave, and a saxophone player, Mike Eaves, who's now dead. Um, We used to call him the Mr. Burns. Mr. Burns. He looked like Mr. Burns from The Simpsons on on microphone. Mm. What a a great guy. Absolutely brilliant guy. Great character. And Mike Eaves used to come and play at the blues bar, and he pressured me to get him and Dave and said, you've got to come and sing at um, Under Solo in oh, Camden. Yeah. Um, and I, was, I went, I went, I was dragged up to Under Solo by Mike Eves and Dave. Um, Dave Clark, I cannot forget his, sur- his surname. Dave Clark, basically Dave Clark. They dragged me to Under Solo and um, they, these guys were playing everything. Lots of, lots of jazz, funk, soul, they were they, they were they were brilliant. These are all ses- all session musicians, mm. all session brilliant. musicians, a, a unbelievable level of musicianship. Intimidating, intimidating as 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 jams can be. As jams can be, yeah. Mm. As jams can be, um, especially with me being so fresh on the scene after having such a long time out of music. You know, I was told that you can never come back after the length of time you took out. You know, everyone was not down on me, but they were saying, how can you come back to music after spending such a long time out of it? You know, I picked up, I used to play harmonica for fun. But then I decided I wanted to play properly. So I joined um, the working men's college in um, Camden. Oh. They've got a harmonica, a blues harmonica class in there. And after six months, I was got, I went to the blues bar, ain't nothing but. And I was jamming along. People said, you ain't been playing harmonica just for six months. I said, yeah, essentially blues art, yes. Mm. You know, six months. I thought, I, I, in my ignorance, I thought you only needed one. Mm. <laughs> 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 I thought you only need one, you know, then I learned that, so no, you've got to have several different harps Mm. for every key of music you're playing in almost. So I went out and bought, I bought more harps. I think, I think at the end of the day, I had over 50 different harmonicas uh, because I had a lot of keys in the relative minors, Mm. attuned to the minor keys because I love playing minor blues. And minor songs in any minor. I love just playing minors. So I went out and bought bought so many harmonicas, and unfortunately, they got destroyed in the flood. Oh no! Uh, I, I had to throw I had to throw all the harmonicas away because that was, as you know, that when that water came, that was sewage water. Mm. So they weren't even they when I when the time by the time I got to the case and opened it, they were not worth saving. They were not worth saving, so I threw them all. I threw them all. I threw them all. You know, everything. It hurts at the time, but it's a bit like a rebirth, run. Hmm. You come through it. You come. You yeah. know, you. Reset. You come through it. Reset. Go again. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. You come. You come through it. So. It, it's it's it, it's great. I mean, the the arch came about because my band and I played, as I said, Uncle Sam's. Hmm. Then I was asked to play in a restaurant in Fetter Lane, which we played at again for another two years. Um, but Fetter Lane, that was brilliant because they gave me 
Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night, which was back to back. So every night with my band. Mm. But after a few months, I was knackered. So what I've done was I got all the bands that I knew from essentially the blues bar, friends of mine from the blues bar that were in bands, and I got their bands to do the Friday night. So it might be a jam night with a band thrown in or just a band night. So I split the nights up and that worked really well for almost two years. And then the guy that owned the restaurant gave it to his sons um, to run. And they decided they didn't want music in there. They wanted it to be just a restaurant. Oh. About the live, and the thing is, the live music was there. Fetter Lane, they made their money in the afternoon when all the businesses were open. So mm. Thursday, fr- Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, it was dead. So I, they made more money and sold. Even the chef said he's never made as many pizzas in years as he was making whilst um, we were there doing what we were doing. So it was good. It was it was great. But then I decided that I'd watched these venues that I'm basically playing music at, Hmm. make money, pay me and my band essentially what was a pittance. And because I had my own business, I used to give the money, the money I was making to the musicians. Hmm. So whilst I didn't mind, and as I say, it was a learning curve, I got tired of watching these businesses make money and just turf us out when it, when it suited them, essentially. Mm. So I decided, if I'm going to do this, I need to do it for myself. Make I need to do it for myself. And at this time, as well as doing Feta Lane, I'd taken over a jam night at the Loaded, the loaded Dog in Leytonstone. So I was also doing the jam night there in Leytonstone, which again, a great some great nights you know I, I i was fortunate ron mm. i was in the right place at the right time you know and i'm quite good with people when it comes to the musicians i don't discriminate against anyone you know that's how i met brett when he was 17. Mm. he came to the loaded dog jam you know a lot of people have come through the arts a lot of people yeah you know you've met a lot of them you've seen a lot of them mm. you know so a lot of talent a lot, of, a lot of talent that I look at now and I'm thinking, wow, you know, Shabaka Hutchins, Nubaya, Nubaya Garcia, Moses Boyd, you know, um, it's a learn. you said, you rightly said, it's a learning ground. Mm. It's a learning ground. You know, people come through there and, and then they move on, hopefully, to create greater things, create arts. You know, I couldn't want for more, really. Mm. Well, I do want more. <laughs> no, that's the way music. I do, goes. Want, I do want. I do want more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it does, m- music more, is more the success. only form that never stops. Yeah. Because when they had a um, couple years, no, a couple, I think it was like fifteen odd years ago, they had um, yeah. Live Aid. Mm. And that's when you know all the governments decided, well, oh, no, we don't really want to get involved in this and that. And then a group of musicians got together. <laughs> yes. And dealt with yeah, the situation. Remember. And at that point, the Bob government Gilt, thought, Bob Gilt off. maybe we can yeah. jump on this now because of this. And I thought, yeah, every time there's a you know something big happens, it's always music that pulls it through. Well, you know what, Ron? It's that's the truth of the situation, though. Hmm. Art is where things always lead off. You look at areas. Look at Hackney Wick and parts of East London. Hmm. Had those, had it not been for the artists that moved into those derelict buildings and doing what they were doing in those buildings, mm. corporates would not have not be bothered with it. True, but because a, a life starts to evolve in those places, then it changes. You know, so I think we personally, again, we have a responsibility as artists, as musicians. Mm to enlighten people, to make people feel good about life and themselves and, you know, and to spread the love. Mm. I mean, at the end of the day, what else is there? You know, mm-hmm. share the love, spread the love and share the love. All good, all good. Well, listen, Yeah. time is against us. 
Probably yes. Almost an hour. Wow. But then I haven't seen you for how long? Yeah. <laughs> and we're normally talking for longer than this. Yeah. It's usually we've either a coffee. Is it a coffee? Yeah, coffee. Yeah. Some sugars, a little bit of milk. Remember that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> always good when we do that. But what we're going to do is we're going to come back because you need to be on the show on a regular basis. Fair enough. Because now that I'm doing all my shows weekly, and you are yes. literally at the end of the road. Okay. This needs to happen on a regular basis, just so everyone knows what is going to happen next where the arch is concerned. Yeah, that's that's all good. That's yeah, love it. Love it. People need to know because remember, there's a lot of places that ain't opening now. I know. Probably this won't is... ever be because they just cannot afford to do it. Yeah, which is you know, which a lot sad. of people have said hmm. it's sad. It's very it's very sad because um. A lot of people have come to me and have said, oh, it's going to be great for you, isn't it? It's going to be great for you. But people need to understand something. Arch One is a very specific place. Mm. You're going to come there for something specific. What makes people go to Shoreditch and places like Shoreditch, Oxton, Islington, or whatever they, you know, whether it's restaurants or you want to go for music, drinks, is because there are a variety of places within that area. Hmm. If people come to Arch One and it's packed, there needs to be somewhere else locally for them to go to. True. If there isn't somewhere locally, you know, there's something to be said for competition. People don't get that. You know, it's hmm. um, it's necessary. Yes. In order to it's survive, necessary. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you know, I mean, you've been to the arch when we've had jams, and there it's been illegal. <laughs> That's what I dare say. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We've all done that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Given the number of people, and as you said, you know, we have to ask other people to let people out and other people to come in. Yeah. You know, several it, times. Yeah, yeah. Several, you know, it was summer, but. We need to have more places, you know. Th you know, there's a there's a club over the road called Fold, mm. and I hope they survive. To be honest, mm. I hope they survive because they're a weekend venue, and I think they're a 24 hour venue on the on the weekend. And it's for, when they were when they opened, it was good for me because people found that it wasn't worth getting to Fold before say midnight. So they stopped by you first, yeah. So they come to Arch One first. Now that's all a blessing. Hmm. It's a blessing, you know, to have somewhere else that people can go to before or after. Um, having one place, even though I think I'll enjoy it, it's it's you know, especially now with the garden area, hmm. you know, which has always been there, but it's just that I developed it during lockdown last summer. That's right. Yeah. When they said mm. when they when they said, Oh, you can now do gigs outside, you know, it was like jump to it, so you know, sort the outside out. Use it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so um that had to be done. But yeah, it's uh, uh, uh Ron, yeah, whenever you need me, man, whenever you need me, I'm here to help help my people, help the arts, mm. you know, to move forward in what we're doing. Now, where can we find you on social media as well? Everyone needs to know this. Social media. But to, to honest truth, this is what I say to most people. If you just Google Arch One, mm -hmm. A-R-C-H, numerical one, all of it will come up, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, it will all come up. It will all, it will all, it will all come up. So if you Google Arch One, mm. you will find me. Nice one. Well, Robert, thank you very much for your time today. This is not going to be the last time, though. We have things to do, music to make, yes, and people to keep their spirits up with. So, yeah. This Definitely. Yes. Yeah. But again, I say thank you very much for your time, and we will catch up. Thank you, Ron. Soon. Yes, thank you. No worries. Take it easy. See you soon. Cheers. Take it easy.